Good morning, this is Judy Gula, uh, Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria, Virginia. We're here with our Facebook Live on Saturday morning, 9.30. So um, thank you everyone for joining us. We appreciate that you're here. And um, we'll just uh, give a couple seconds to get it and let everybody know, send the, the information out that we're live. and. To, to join us, so I hope everyone is having a very enjoyable Saturday and have some creative projects set up for the day. So, and, and my, my Saturday is Sunday, so, and I definitely have things running through my brain after reviewing some of these books, so um, that is awesome. I, you guys, the number one thing, when I feel like I'm stalled, I, I pull a stack of books out and I just glance through them and, and look at them and it'll pop and generate some ideas on what I'm interested in doing. So, okay, so book review. Um, I have some books that I talk about on a regular basis that I think should be in every uh, library. So there is fabric embellishing, modern hand stitching, first time beading, threads, and of course, colorful panel quilts. My, everybody should have my book, for sure. Um, then I, we have some new books that we talked about in, um, in a new magazine, I'm not sure if you're aware of. So quarantine quilts. There's a lot going on documenting what's happened in the last two years and how artists have worked with it. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you a couple of pages and things. Cass Holmes talks about that as well as in, in her new book. Um, and then we have Ann Kelly with Textile Travels, which has some great mixed media work as well. And then our local uh, artist of fame is uh, Cindy Griselda, who's come out with her second book, Improv Adventures in Improv Quilts. So I'm gonna give you a little bit uh, of my opinion about the books. So, um, glasses on. I'm sorry, they don't coordinate today. They kind of, you know, go for the splash. Um, let me tell you my hardcore favorites, all right? This is Fabric Embellishment, and this is a great basic book that um, two of my buddies participated in, Ruth Chandler, Liz Kettle, and what this is going to do is give you a little bit of introduction into embellishing. Uh, some of the products have changed, and that's actually what happens over time as things come in and things come out, what's available, what's not available. But the other idea that I really love is that it's set up as a book. So it's giving you interest in books and things, and some, as you can see, it can be wildly crazy or it can be calm. It can be changing a thread or, or it can be adding embellishment. So this will walk you through some of the things. Here's a crazy quilt. What do you do? Um, construction, printing. So it's just a little bit of an introduction into ways to add some embellishing to your books, to your quilts, to your, to your fabric books. Um, so rusting and, and beading, just so a little bit of an introduction. So this kind of gives you a taste of different things and maybe then you can pick what you want to go into in detail. Um, lots and lots of hand stitching going on right now. Mindful mending, um, stitch, uh, just hand, hand stitching things. This is, uh, I think, one of the best books on hand stitching that I have um, had the privilege to work with. And Ruth Chandler, who grew up in Japan, brings some of that to the book as well. And then she also talks about, she's, she is also based on a book, which again, I just think is brilliant because now I have a sample that I can refer to and, and it's not just pieces of fabric in my drawer. Um, there's one of my pieces with block printing and um, painter's threads. But she'll sell, tell you, the basis of the book is, let's show you how to do the stitch the way they say to do it. And then let's show you what you can do to personalize the stitch and make it different for you. And that is how the book is set up, no boundaries. 
So there is the stitch, and then how do you use it to go beyond that basic stitch? Ricing, things like that. So let's see. Um, buttonhole stitch, so um, detached cross stitch, and then she's showing you the no boundaries. So if you like hand stitching, I this is definitely a must have. Um, first time beading. This is um, a great book and it really just should say beading on fabric because it really doesn't matter if you've done it a million times or if you've never done it before. These are, again, I had some YouTube videos about a book that I made. It's all based on a book or a quilt. So she's telling you, this is Liz Kettle is the author and she talks about beads and the types of beads, sizes and all that kind of stuff. But what's really cool is she you, gives you instructions on how to do a stitch sampler and then here's her bead book. Um, talks about just basic stitching that really can make a difference in your piece. This is a batik panel by Jaka and we worked with different beading to enhance that one as well as you can use lots of beading with um, crazy quilting and thing and, and this one. So she walks you through that and you have examples of how to use it on the quilt, but you develop a book as well. Um, and I think the whole concept of books is really great. And then the other one is Threads, The Basics and Beyond. Again, Liz Kettle is one of the authors. And this is also set up on a book. So you can create samples of using your different stabilizer, different threads, printing out your stitches on your machine, whatever machine you have, and you save them and you refer to them and you go, okay, well, I'm working on a quilt and this is what, this is, I remember I have this sample here. Let me look back at what my notes are. Um, and moss stitch, techniques, and really, I consider Liz the foremost thread queen ever. Um, learned quite a bit about thread from her. That's how I found out about Wonderful thre specialty threads and had that connection and, and got, quickly got addicted to their, their threads. Where can you find Liz now? Liz, she is at Textile Evolution is her website. She is also on Facebook as Liz Kettle and Stitch Meditations is another page that she has. It's a group page. And she has moved to the West Coast. She is in Washington State. Pulled by grandkids. <laughs> it's interesting, I don't have grandkids, so I don't know what that pull is. Yet. 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 Um, but yes, so that, those are ways to get in touch with Liz. Liz and I will also be doing a tour, an art tour to Italy in September of 2022. And we will be um, team teaching, team facilitating really um, at this uh, program where you do some art. We will have studios, we will have live art that we will work on as well as touring this area in um, Italy that's near Lake Bolsana and this, the town is Isto de Castro. So we're working on launching that. Um, we have an e we have the email for the organizer of the, the tour. If you'd like, send it to me. So you're interested in the Italy tour and we will forward on to Lewis and he'll get back to you about the details. So. Lori Wan says she wants to go. Yes, yes. We definitely, it's, it's, it's really great. It's a lot of fun. I mean, and we have a full studio, so you're, you can be painting on your knees if you want, but you don't have to. We have tables. So, and the art is absolutely amazing. It's, it's, yes, it's great. Okay, so then I left my last book for me is mine. And this is really about working with batik panels, but it, what, there's all kinds of things that can be panels. How about a piece of kimono? How about a very piece of a, a, um, a fabric that is a unique artisan that you just like that little bit of piece. So I talk about ways of how to center that panel, so to speak, whatever that may be for you, and how to embellish it. So this is um, 
definitely one I think everybody should have. All right. Any questions so far? Okay. So let's talk about some of the new um, uh, books that we have. Um, I am definitely a Badsford uh, person. I, I really love to see what they're doing in Britain. Um, it's, it's interesting when I've talked to British artists, they say they love to see what we're doing here and, and we love to see what they're doing there. So it's a global interaction that is possible now because of the internet and everything that we have. And that's probably how many of us survived during the past two years. Um, this one is Textile Travels, and it's written by Ann Kelly. And I just, of course, you know, they're all, they're text, <laughs> tactile, so we love the feel of them. But, um, I mean, she's talking about traveling. She's working on um, maps and has this texture that she's using bits and pieces and collaging. And I love that it's reusing things, um, meaning textiles, which is part of what I absolutely love. And then she's creating these little containers with maps and from trips. And, and I just think that is cool also. So a lot of it is containers. Um, and she brings other people into it. I know, it's like, what is this? Does this all looks like hand stitching, but I can't. I'm like, I made a note. What is that stitching? I have to go back and look at it. You know, she's covered. This is a, I, I've worked with purses and things where I've put textiles and embellished them, and she's doing it with containers. So there's uh, books, uh, a backpack kind of thing. Uh, and But then the other thing, this is one, I think this is my favorite. So there's maps that were created with a fabric background and they are in these types of pieces and they were all together. I was gifted by a customer several of these um, and I just truly over the moon and she had bought them in France. And so they're fabric, but they have this paper. So I love how she, this is a map of Devon and she has created all these little pieces that have enhanced this map whether she's been there or envisions it, it's really very interesting. And of course, Metro, we always have all the colors in Metro. And what the, she also did, and Kelly also did bring other artists in so that there is information about what is going on. And I love these folding, um, so, you know, oh, and this I think is absolutely awesome. So that's, we see a lot of those at charity shops and things. Uh, here we go. But, and doll houses, three dimension. That was very cool too. So her containers kind of draw me in and that's part of what I like. And she, again, includes other artists with it uh, within the book and talks about how they use their travel and um, how they use their vintage. <coughs> So um, I, I will be keeping this book. It'll inspire you for your own travels. My own travels, yes. So that is Textile Travels by Ann Kelly. Then we were lucky to have Cass Holmes come and teach for us uh, right before the pandemic and has had multiple, all of her books. And this is the new one, again, talking about COVID and, and, and what it was like for two years and what she worked on. And uh, I thought that a couple of things struck me. She worked, she gave us some pieces that maybe a little larger, a little comp composition was a little more complicated than maybe we were interested, that we felt we had the confidence to do. But then she brought it down to little pieces. So, and gives very nice instructions on how to do these small pieces. And there's one in here, um, that was a teacup, so maybe I didn't mark that page. So, um, but very, very nice instructions. She talks about a little bit of what 
um, gave her the inspiration for that idea. Again, she's another one that works with vintage textiles and paints and surface design and eco printing. And she included other artists as well. So this was definitely um, something that included other people. Okay, my post-it notes are not working. Um, so, and it just, and then this is a larger piece that was done um, in England. This one looks, looks interesting. Same sea, different boat, isolation story, 2020 lockdown. And this was from Textiles in Lockdown, Ruth Singer, a research project. I cannot say that. Gowthrop Hall, Textiles. Gowthrop, yeah. Okay. So that was interesting. And then she talks about landscapes. Again, I love these folding books. I love working with older papers and actually using old books as sketchbooks. Um, the other thing I thought was interesting, I have no confidence in my drawing, none whatsoever. So here she talks about specifically drawing with um, looking at your item and not really looking at your paper. And then she takes that and draws it into her fabric. Um, so you have an idea, you've drawn it once, you could put it on tracing paper, you could do lots of different things, but this is a very simple basic exercise leading you to some of these sketchy type looks. And that is, um, like okay well I might try that but I do you know she does say it takes practice so it's one of those things that we need to do on a regular basis again a wonderful wonderful book um, another one this is quarantine quilt okay so this is totally focused on the last two years of um, being in lockdown and I thought it was interesting what I caught was her contents. Circling coronavirus, circling the globe, art, village and pandemic patterns, pandemic landscapes, politics and protests. Because a lot of that was happening all during this pandemic. And the quilts in here are absolutely wonderful. This is total eye candy. So this is a curated book. Yes with stories. So they are, they're talking about what led them to that, what, how the pandemic affected them. Um, I, you know, some people were used to working at home and so that it really didn't make enough a difference. Some of us were not used to being at home as much as we do and, and kind of couldn't get ourselves going. So there was just a lot of all I can say is I'm scared, right? Because we have, we don't know. I mean, uh, this is a book to keep to. Yeah. It's just. Remember what we've all gone through. Very, very. This one's very cool. Um, the international, this is worldwide that these quilts were submitted by just everybody that one I love that one of course because it has doilies on it and flowers so but this is just eye candy it's wonderful um, we get a magazine that's called curated quilts and I guess we've had it for a couple of years now and I'm I, I really didn't know about it Julie found it and it's quite interesting curated it really is curated they they do obviously this is themes is on stripes has articles and quilts and artists and submissions so this one I think is a sleeper book that maybe you haven't looked at but you should look at it it's fabulous paper high quality printing and this is talking about Artists who have submitted work. This is their gallery. Devil's cloth is stripes, zebras. Of course, this is my favorite picture. 
because I like old stuff. History of Stripes, The Devil's Cloth is the book. And here we go. So we have other ones, so each. Yes. So we have um, curated quilts, multiple issues. So once we get the current issue, we actually discount the back issues. So you can get them at a savings. And they're really, again, it's a wonderful thing. There does have articles, this article, current articles about color. You know, we can always learn new things about color and pattern, and it gives you a couple of patterns as well. So all of our magazines that we do get, we will do that with. So if you're not aware of it, if we still have back stock on something that is a previous issue, we mark them down and that's all on our web. Um, many magazines we get. All right, so I saved Cindy Griselda for last. I think that she, has a, just a very dynamic and her artistic personality is very practiced. And I know when I see these types of quilts, I, I think of her. Um, but we're, she's also close to her heart because she sews on Berninas. So in the book, she actually has a really cool picture of her studio, which I did tag it. And there's her studio, and there's her Q20. And she says in the book that she, when it was done, she sews on a 440. I happen to know she now sews on a 570. So um, she is definitely a Bernina girl, and she does wonderful, wonderful stitching with her Bernina Q20. And how do you know that she sews on a 570? Because I sold them to her. <laughs> She comes to me for her Bernina machines and we take care of her. I actually went to her house and set her Q20 up for her. Um, she had a few deadlines and it was a little panicky, but we got it done. Um, goes without saying, she's talking about color and line. Nice information about that in there. It's, it's just, I mean, you can just see it's color and line. She's, she's got it. She works primarily in solids. But I remember one day when she was in the store, I was like, well, you know, we really need to show people with these Aboriginal fabrics that they have some ability to be used in these um, modern big printed things. So this is a piece that she did. This is also um, solids. I think this is Marsha Durst probably these two. So she's, she did say um, in our last newsletter, not this Wednesday, but last Wednesday, we gave you a link for an interview. You can go to CT Publishing, and they did interview Cindy, and she talks about her color choices and her fabric choices. Um, and then she talks about choosing palettes. So there's a whole section on colors and what you need to do or what the suggestions are and how to practice color theory. And my big thing about color theory is that you do have to practice and you do have to put things in there and maybe we have a color wheel and we know about secondary and primary and opposites and that stuff but also look at what your eye is telling you what does it look like when you put a solid piece of fabric in there or one that maybe sometimes take the ugliest fabric you can think of the one that will not you're like positive it won't work a lot of times it works because you can use a little bit of it and gives it some pop so she goes into a lot of the color. Um, absolutely great, great information about color, balance. I just love the curves. I love the curves. Just using design principles and improv, three ways to create. Um, and then she does go into, this is, I did tag this because I thought it was worth mentioning. Tips to remember. So this is in the section about free motion. And I think it's wonderful. It won't be perfect. Free motion is a hand guided process even though you're using a machine to make the stitches. If you feel you've made a mistake, keep going. Either ignore it or do it again so it becomes the design element. I am a big fan of that one. Just think about creating texture. That's what people see. Nobody knows what you meant to do. They just see the lovely result. 
And when somebody walks up to your quilt, don't say, but I meant to do this. Just say, here it is. This is what it looks like and it is perfect for what I wanted it to be. And then she does have some student gallery work that's really pretty cool. And um, it's wonderful to be included in that. So a big shout out to Cindy. Uh, great second book. I would say, you know, get both of them. It's, it's a definitely a good thing to do. Do we have any questions, Chris? Nope. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. We are um, have lots of things coming up. We have our stockings that we're going to present in our newsletters over the next month that will be, um, we're raising money for our annual um, donation to charity. Uh, we have some uh, Facebook Live on sale on Thursday, the third Thursday. I would like to know, I, we're, we're looking, we have gone to a company called Comment Sold uh, to work with them in trying to keep up with our Facebook Lives and it gives us an easier way to put things in your shopping cart and that type of stuff. So if you have any experience with comments sold, can you leave some messages in the, the um, under the videos? Because that will be helpful to me what, to know what your feedback is. And if you've used it, who have you used it with? What store and that type of stuff. It's an app that you put on your phone and, and the sold comes a lot faster than the way we're doing it now. So we're hoping that it's gonna help make things faster. All right. Have a fabulous day. See us on Facebook. Shop from us online or in the store at artisticartifacts.com. Thank you very much.